Okay, so this is going to be part 10 and kind of like the final chapter of all this beginner stuff that I've been talking about. So I'm going to get into what, uh, you know, the general movement, the interval training, and the uh, resistance training into a little bit more depth. So general movement accounts for the majority of the calories that you burn in a day. So while they're not the most exciting life changes, they're definitely the most basic. Uh, lots of small steps add up in a huge way. So when you're not working out, your body is recovering. And that's probably most obvious when you sleep. But you're also recovering during our low intensity, like just daily rituals. And by keeping a steady pace throughout the day, um, our body is stimulated into recovery mode. There's a lot of things you could change with a pretty minuscule amount of creativity. And just a few suggestions would be taking the stairs instead of the elevator, uh, parking at the opposite end of the parking lot, going out for a walk, dancing, that kind of stuff. Uh, interval training, it's pretty simple when first starting out. Uh, go like 100% for about 20 seconds, then rest 25 to 40 seconds, and repeat that eight, about eight times. Uh, for this like four minutes of torture thing, you could do 20 seconds sprint, 10 seconds rest, and just repeat that as much as you can. Sprints are great for interval training, uh, so is jump rope, and you can always learn like tricks and stuff for that too. Uh, racing, running up hills, running stairs, uh, like when I say a kid playing tag, biking, swimming, uh, bludgeons, burpees, that kind of stuff. Uh, those last ones will need some explanation, but a bludgeon is basically taking a bat to a pillow or uh, like a sledgehammer to a tire, something like that. Uh, a burpee, I think I said burpee, that's um, you stand starting with your heads, hands above your head, go down into push-up position, do a push-up and then jump into kind of squat position and get back up and then you repeat. I think that's a military thing where those come from. And uh, thrusters are another good example of that. That is uh, squatting with a weight in your hands, and then you put it over your shoulders with the help of the momentum from your legs driving up. And body weight squats are a good way to work up to that if you can't do them right away. And those are all exercises that you don't need a gym membership for, because really the best, ex the best workouts you could get are at like a public track or something like that. And sports are still a great option for interval training because the, the whole stop and go aspect of like basketball or wrestling, dancing, whatever it is, it gives your body an adrenaline fueled challenge. A misconception is that, I'm getting into resistance training now, um, that it turns muscle into fat, or I'm sorry, fat into muscle is probably what you would want more, uh, but that is physiologically impossible. You can burn fat and gain muscle simultaneously, but there's no bodily function that turns one into the other. You also don't have to worry about getting big and bulky, especially from, or you won't get big and bulky from weightlifting necessarily. If that's your goal for some reason, that's kind of a whole different uh, discipline and philosophy, different diet, different training regimen, and it'll get you those results. And I'll get that into I'll get into that in future stuff, and maybe I've given you some insight to it already from things I've already been talking about. But, um, um, where am I? Oh, and toning is another kind of like buzzword where you really won't get that from training, resistance training either, at least in the way that most people perceive it, which is usually uh, low, like you achieve it by doing low weight and high reps. Uh, Brad Pitt from Fight Club is kind of like the poster child for that. Uh, it's kind of impossible if the weight is too low. It would be better to aim for a strong muscle definition and a low body fat percentage, which is kind of what toning is in its purest idea. Um, and to explain that a little bit better, there's really three types of muscle gain, strength, fat, strength, size, and endurance. So if you're doing a bunch of sets of an exercise, if you want to build strength, keep it in the three to one rep range. 
so that you're you're going pretty hard like it's pretty hard to do but you could only do like three to one reps per set uh, if you're going for size you want to do between four and seven and if you're going for endurance which is like uh, you know what endurance is uh, between like eight and twelve reps and anything after that is basically cardio. Uh, that doesn't mean that the guy at the gym doing, you know, five sets of 20 push-ups is doing anything wrong. It's just that everyone has different goals and different ways to achieve them. So, you know, try everything out, listen to your body, and make your own decisions after you get an idea of it. Uh, also, barbells and dumbbells are much more efficient for resistance training than cables and machines. The reason I say resistance training is because somewhere along the line, um, instead of just weight training, people use things other than gravity to get a workout, which not necessarily a great thing. They have their functions, but when a weight is attached to some kind of pulley or device to alter the amount of force that's required to move it, it's taking away from the movement. Uh, it requires a little bit less stability, so your body as a whole is working less in order to focus on an isolated muscle or muscle group. So things like Smith machines, pec decks, all that other stuff, they're designed with good intentions and they have a role in specific situations like rehab or bodybuilding or whatever, but are not really necessary in a starting routine. Uh, machines I think are even a little bit worse than cables just because they keep the range of motion on a track and it doesn't really compensate for the differences in body types and sizes. So really, simplicity is golden. Barbell, dumbbell is the way to go. Um, and working out at home can be a great convenience. Uh, gyms or offer a lot more access to equipment, but they're not always a possibility. Say you're snowed in or it's late or uh, stuff like that. Um, you could do a workout at home. And I'll get into that a little bit more, but like a, a pull-up bar... Um, a chair, you know, a backpack filled with books, uh, water bottles, your body weight, other people. As long as you're creative, there's ways to get a, a workout at home, a good one. Um, a beginner resistance training workout routine should consist of 20 reps divided into sets per exercise. So when starting out, you want to keep it at like a four to six rep max per set with good form and a full range of motion. If six is too easy, you can make the exercise a little bit harder, and if three is too hard, try to find a way to make that exercise easier. So like for push-ups, um, if you do push-ups from your knees, that's a way to make them easier. Or if, they're, if you're able to do six too easily, put on a backpack filled with books and do push-ups with the backpack on, and that's a way to make them harder. It's also good to, um, oh, and as far as like dividing up the sets, you could do like six, five, five, four. So one set of six, one set of five, one set of five, one set of four. And that's what I mean by dividing the 20 reps into sets per exercise. Because um, six plus five plus five is four. In case I haven't iterated this enough yet. Uh, there's also um, a good thing to do is make workout A and workout B. So maybe like workout A would be um, a pushing with your hips and a pulling with your shoulders kind of workout. And then workout B would be like a pulling with your hips and pushing with your shoulders kind of workout. And I'll get into that a little bit more. Exercises that require you to push your hips are squats, split squats, and lunges. Deadlift is a hip pull motion and its variations. Um, and good mornings are also um, a hip pull motion. Push ups are ideal for a shoulder push and can be enhanced with weight, like the backpack I was saying, or elevating your feet on a chair. Shoulder presses are also great for a shoulder push. Uh, shoulder pulls are for developing your back. So you could do like bent over rows or uh, pull-ups. And exrx.net has a great uh, exercise database that shows you proper form for those motions. And that's everything. I'll get more into other stuff later on.